Welcome here. Thanks for joining us today, guys. It's so awesome to be with you. If you don't know me, I am Michael, and I'm one of the pastors here at Alliance Community Church. I just want to open our Bibles together, if you will, with me to Matthew 3. It says, As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending on him and alighting on him. And a voice of heaven from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With Him I am well pleased. Can you imagine being there in that moment when heaven was opened and you heard the verbal voice of God? Think about the people who were standing there. You know, why didn't Jesus gain like 10,000 followers right there and then, in that moment? Like whoever would have been there that day, I thought they would have wanted to immediately turn and follow, you know? So many friends I know who, um, who aren't Christians, they say, if I just heard the open voice of God, I would believe. And I just love to go to, back to these moments where go, there's a lot of people there probably that day that heard that and were like, mm, I'm not convinced. <laughs> you know, a dove fell from heaven. Mm, I'm not certain. But a cool moment where you clearly see heaven speak. We're heading into an Advent series right now where we're looking at when heaven speaks uh, to, to Mary, to the wise men, to the shepherds. We're going to be going through that over the next four weeks, and we're super excited to have you with us as we look at when you hear God send somebody to speak from heaven over this crazy, awesome Christmas story. So excited to do that with you. A couple of announcements to keep in mind. The Christmas Bureau is coming up, and what the Christmas Bureau is is an organization that has helps families receive Christmases that otherwise wouldn't get to have it. And what I mean by that is families who are too poor to provide presents for um, their own family, the Christmas Bureau reaches out to them and finds out what those kids want and families want and then organizes it for other people to buy that stuff for them. And it's a really cool thing that you could do with your family or with your small group or with your friends. And um, if you were, we've been allotted five families, but even if you don't get to do one of those five families, there's items uh, that, that are written in the bulletin that are needed. So you can find that online, and there you can go ahead and be a part of this really cool thing to help bless families who will otherwise won't get to have Christmas. So talk to your small group, talk to your family about doing that. And if you want to be a part of it, the deadline is December 6th. So make sure, if you want to be a part of it, you get your stuff in by December 6th. Second thing is we are doing another kickoff for our small groups in an opportunity for you to partake in a, a Bible study called Experiencing God. And if you want more details about it, you can talk to Verna. But so far, the one that happened last, last year at this time was really loved and is quite similar to this kind of idea. Um, but if you want to be a part of this experience in God um, in your small groups, you need to contact Verna before December 15th so she can order your group books. So December 15th is the cutoff if you want to be doing that with your small group. So just check with them, see what they're, if they're interested in doing this thing. You know, that it's kind of cool to be on the same page as the church, even in our little micro groups as we gather to dive into God's word. And the final announcement that I wanted to bring to your attention would be the ACC Gather and Give. It's a women's event. Men, you are not invited. It is on December 3rd, and it'll be starting at the church at 7 p.m. And it's a worship night where they're going to be collecting items for the Women's Outreach Society, which will be a lot of women... Um, uh, items, uh, women items as well as like toothpaste, diapers, anything like that. So stuff that you want to bring, bring those kinds of things, toiletries, valuable items that are, they would love to be able to give away. Um, and it's a sign up event. So please don't forget that you need to sign up for it. These events fill up. So get on it. Don't hesitate. If you want to be a part of it, get on it. So that's the announcements we have for that. But here's one special one for the kids. Christy, our children's pastor here, has put together a quiz for you guys. And this quiz is going to be playing right away. There's a video and it's going to be a challenge of how much do you really know 
about the Christmas story. And so get your pens out, get ready to answer the questions because it's going to be playing right away. But I'm going to just close this time with a word of prayer and then we're, we're going to dive into all that. So Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for each one who's tuned in today. And I just pray you bless them. And uh, yeah, would we have open hearts to receive from you today. In your name, amen.
Hello everyone. For those who don't know me, who haven't seen my face or I haven't had a chance to meet, my name is Jonathan and I'm a former youth pastor here at Alliance Community Church. And I just wanted to come to you this morning and say uh, thank you so much, uh, ACC family, for the ways in which you guys have journeyed with us over the last couple of years as we've been in Central Asia as international workers with the Alliance Canada. Um, we have been in a season of transition coming back to Canada over the last couple months. Uh, some of you may have been aware from our updates or from hearing from other people about uh, some of the health challenges that our youngest son has been facing. And um, we just want to say that currently he is doing really well. He's been adjusting uh, well to food here again and um, has been doing amazing. Uh, but we're so thankful for the way that God has been leading and guiding us over this season. And so as we've been landing back in Canada, we've been trying to figure out what God has for us in this season going forward. We are um, officially resigning from Global Ministries at the end of this year, and we will be taking a position of associate pastor in Sturgeon Alliance Church up in Gibbons, close to Edmonton. Um, God has been providing and has been so kind to us in this season. And um, even though we are sad to be uh, closing off the season of international work in Asia, we are so thankful for um, the, the last couple of years of ministry that we had there. And we're so thankful for you and for the ways that you gave and prayed and were just friends and family for us through this season. And so we just wanted to come to you this morning and say thank you from the bottom of our hearts for joining us in that. Let's just take a minute to pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you for each one who's tuned in today, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for sending your Son, Lord, to this earth. Thank you, Jesus, that you walked through all of the things that we've walked through. Jesus, you see what each person right now is walking through, and you've walked in our shoes. Lord, I pray that they would sense your presence as they go about their days. Lord, whether they're in a time of celebration or mourning, would they feel your presence? Lord, I pray for a, a resting of peace over each household. Uh, a running to you in, in the struggles, Jesus, and a celebrating of you, Lord, in all circumstances. Lord, in this season, would we make much of you? Would we choose to be people who live generously? That we look beyond our own four walls and we look outward to the world who is in such need, Lord, thank you that you love those who are far from you. Would we, um, with urgency, go out and seek those who are far from you, Jesus, whether it's with our time, our finances, or with whatever you've given us to give. I pray that we would do that, Lord, as you did that for us. Lord Jesus, open our hearts to receive today. Thank you for who you are. We love you, Jesus. Amen. When I was in high school, I worked at a tourist attraction that was a few miles out of Revelstoke called Three Valley Gap. You ever been to Three Valley Gap? You ever been to the ghost town at Three Valley Gap? I was the ghost town boy. I was the guy that opened up the ghost town, that opened up the attractions, I ran the store, I sold the tickets so everybody could get in, all the tourists could uh, enjoy their time in this ghost town. And my buddies, some of my buddies worked there with me as well. We worked in different areas, sometimes in the kitchen, sometimes in the restaurant, sometimes doing maintenance. And one day, my, my buddy Reed uh, was working maintenance in the ghost town. So the ghost town had closed for the day. It was getting the evening. It was a later night. And uh, he was, had to dig a hole. I'm not sure what for, but he had to dig a hole in the ghost town. And, but he had to dig it in the cemetery. Okay. So here it is. It's late at night. It's dark. And Reed is digging 
what looks like a graveyard in a ghost town cemetery. A grave in a ghost town cemetery, okay? Now, at some point, he knows that our other buddy, Darren, is going to come down and let him know when the shift is done. So he's waiting there, he, and it's, he knows that Darren is going to try and scare him. So he's just trying to, you know, don't get scared, don't get scared. He's digging this graveyard, this grave in this graveyard in a ghost town, and uh, doing his best to prepare to not get scared. Well, you guessed it. He pretty much wet his pants when Darren jumped out from behind a tree and yelled that his shift was done. Uh, his poor heart. You know, um, maybe you've been scared like that too. Where you feel like your pulse is racing, your body freezes, you cry out in panic. It's happened to me. When all's, when all's done, you get to a place of safety, your legs feel like rubber, uh, and your whole body's exhausted. Now, some of you kind of really dig the whole jump scare thing. Uh, you like to be freaked out. It gives you an adrenaline rush. Is that you? If it is, I think you're nuts, okay? I hate that kind of stuff. And today we're gonna to be looking at one of the biggest jump scares of all time, maybe the mother of all jump scares, and we'll get to that in just a bit. Today also is the first day of Advent, and Advent is a time of preparation. We traditionally take four weeks to kind of uh, get our minds and our hearts uh, focused on the birth of Christ because it's so important. It's very easy in our uh, uh, busyness during this season or during just life in general and that Christmas can just sort of sneak up onto us, up us, and also realize it's Christmas Day. And we haven't prepared or um, gotten ready for that. So we want to get on that early. We want to think about the meaning of Christmas uh, for more than just one day. We want to prepare our hearts for the coming of Jesus so that we can embrace him for all that he is. We want to embrace the season of Advent. And this Advent we'll be teaching through a series called When Heaven Speaks. That's what the wings are for. This is not just to make me look, you know, spectacular. Though you may want to come and just get your picture taken by these and, uh, and have big wings coming out of you. But um, our, our series is on When Heaven Speaks. Eight times in the few chapters around the nativity story in Matthew and Luke, God speaks. Heaven speaks. God speaks through angels. He speaks through dreams, visions. Now, uh, uh, it's very noticeable because of the time that was going on. This is a unique time in history. God had been silent for 400 years. The people of Israel, they were used to hearing God speak through the prophets, through some of their kings and leaders. Uh, they just had grown used to God speaks to his people. But um, uh, then the Heavenly Father went quiet. There was nothing coming from above. It was as if the lines were cut. Now, a couple weeks ago, I mentioned a guy named John Francis who took a, a vow of silence, and he was silent for 17 years. Uh, and as, as the years went on, people began to, I mean, the, the intensity of wondering, oh, when is he going to stop this vow of silence? And what will he say when he gets a chance to speak? Um, what would all those years of silence produce? I think this is what was kind of going on a couple millennia ago when uh, during that God silence, people were waiting. They were expectant. expectant. They were hungry to hear from the voice of God. And then God spoke. He sent angels from heaven, supernatural beings, creatures that are not human, are not from this earth, to speak his messages to people. What would he say? What was so important that he couldn't keep silent any longer? Well, we're going to look at four of those messages over these next few weeks. The angel spoke to the shepherds, they spoke to the wise men, they spoke to Joseph, and they spoke to Mary. Four different recipients, four different messages. But each of these messages are just as relevant today as they were to the hearers back then. Because God wants to speak peace to us today. He wants to warn us today. He wants us to trust him even when the way ahead seems difficult. And he wants to comfort us and fulfill us, his promises to us. So as we journey this path together, let us, let us lean into this Advent season and allow God to prepare our hearts for the coming of his son, Jesus. So turn with me in your Bibles to Luke chapter 2. We're going to look at Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. Here's what it says. Very familiar story. Uh, we read this every year. It says this. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified. But the angel said to them, 
do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things in her heart and pondered them. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Now, this ancient passage is very relevant for us these days. In so many ways, we're just like those shepherds. We are terrified. We are afraid. And we need peace. Now, of course, the shepherds were afraid. This is the jump scare I was telling you about a little earlier. Uh, there they were, sitting quietly, kind of minding their sheep, minding their own business, when all of a sudden the heavens lit up and an angel appeared before them. How do you prepare for something like that? You can't. It's like my buddy Darren jumping out to scare my buddy Reed. So the first thing the angel tells him is, do not be afraid. Seems like the most common sense thing to say. They are petrified. Some of them are probably running, bolting. He says, don't, don't be afraid. But God um, often speaks one message for one moment that has a bigger application. He was dealing with bigger issues than just a momentary fright. Those shepherds, like everyone else, carried fear in their hearts. They carried these fears long before the angel appeared to them. We we're all afraid of something. And the angel was bringing a big message for the fears that we may experience. Be not afraid. What are you afraid of these days? Are you afraid of giving or spreading COVID? Be not afraid. Are you afraid of losing your job? Be not afraid. Are you afraid of government takeover? Be not afraid. Are you afraid of losing your rights? Are you afraid of the end times? Are you afraid of dying? Are you afraid of what might happen after you die? Be not afraid. Are you afraid of letting your kids go? Are you afraid of someone finding out that secret you've kept hidden for so long? Are you afraid of losing someone you love? Be not afraid. I mean, there's an unending list of things that we can be afraid of. It's because we're mortal and we live in a world that we don't fully understand where bad things can happen to good people when they least expect it. There is no guarantee that we will be able to avoid suffering and pain. It could happen today. It could happen this afternoon. But God's message through the angels tells us not to be afraid. We have peace, supernatural peace. Paul describes this as a peace that goes beyond understanding, that doesn't even make sense. Somehow in the midst of terrifying situations, when we don't have the kind of control we want and we can't manage the outcome, we can still be filled with peace. I've experienced this a lot. I've experienced it like many of you have. You know, when you, uh, just the normal uh, things that can bring us fear and terror, you've, I've experienced peace in those times. I've also experienced peace after being diagnosed with having a, an anxiety disorder. <laughs> You know, when, when everything around me could terrify me and bring me down, God's presence brought me peace. You don't have to carry your fear with you, my friends. You may have brought it to this meeting, to this talk, to this talk today, but you don't have to take it away with you. Christ is the Prince of Peace. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. These were words that Jesus said to his disciples. His disciples who had been with him for three years. They had seen him do miracles. They saw how powerful he was. They watched him calm seas and heal the sick and walk on the water. And they still needed to be reminded to not be afraid. 
probably we do too. You know, we, the kingdom, have a song called Peace. And I love the lyrics of this song. I play it often. It says this. When my heart is like a battlefield and my, and my mind is overcome by fear and hope seems like a ship that's lost at sea, my enemy is on every side and I'm tempted to run and hide. Your gentle whisper reaches out to me. Fiery arrows whistling, the terror of night sets in. But I can feel your angels all around. I'm wrestling underneath the shelter of your mighty wings. Your promises are where my hope is found. Peace holds me when I'm broken. Sweet peace that passes understanding. When the whole wide world is crashing down, I fall to my knees and breathe in your peace. This is what the angel was promising. This is what the multitude of angels were saying. But was there any foundation for this peace that they were proclaiming? You see, it's got to be more than just telling someone to not be afraid when they're terrified. It's like telling your spouse, hey, calm down when they're angry. It doesn't work. You need something to put your trust in. You need something that will bring you relief from the fear, something from the outside, something that stands against the terror and overcomes it. Well, the angel had that something. He had some news. He had some news. He had some information that would alter the way the shepherds were viewing the world. See, those shepherds, they kind of just represented Israel, a people confused, a people without a path forward, a people trying to make sense of what was going on around them. They were God's chosen people, and yet they were under Roman rule. How could that be? Why weren't they free? Why was God silent? Where was the promised Messiah who would be the king of the Jews? Isaiah writes, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. They were in darkness, deep, oppressive, unending darkness. And then the angel brought the light of understanding. He brought news. He brought good news. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. He says today, it was a real day. It wasn't just a pretend day. It wasn't a once upon a time day. It was a real day, just like today is an actual day. And he says today in the town of Bethlehem, it was a real town, not a pretend town. You can go and visit Bethlehem today. When we were in Israel, uh, we wanted to go to Bethlehem, but because it was in the West Bank and there was still so much fighting, we, uh, it was just too dangerous. But I saw a sign. I saw a road sign that said Bethlehem 10 kilometers away. It, was, it, was a real, it is a real place. And it's, then the angel says, A Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This was incredible news for those people. They needed saving. Right up until that moment, they only thought they needed saving from Roman uh, oppression. But when, they, when the sky lit up and they were exposed to the glory of God, I am sure that they realized that they were unworthy to be where they were, that they had much more darkness in them that they needed to be saved from. They needed a Savior, one to forgive them of all their sins. And Jesus was that promised one, a real time, a real place, and a real Savior. And the Savior was lying in a manger just over the hill. Like, the, the, the message of that is brilliant. Jesus is accessible. He's approachable. For someone like a lowly shepherd, they could actually go and see Jesus because he was really there. He was humble. He was of the people. He was born for them. This was all good news indeed. It was news that everyone needs to hear. And like those shepherds, we can feel an insecurity as well. And we need stability, the stability of truth. Now, these are dark and bewildering days. We have more access to information than anybody has ever had before. And yet, there's no roadmap on how you work through that information. Just think of all the information we're hearing these days. You can find wildly different opinions on every topic. Does the world we live in, the internet and all this information, does it make things more confusing or more clear? I just find it's just... It's just so confusing. There's no way to sort through what we're hearing. Smart, informed, articulate people argue on both sides of the equation. Some say getting vaccinated is the only way. It's the only smart thing to do. Others say that this whole pandemic thing is just made up. 
Some say one political party will set things right for our province. Others say that another party will solve all the problems. Some say we're born with a certain gender. Others say that uh, we're gender fluid. How do we know what's right? Aren't we all on the same level? Isn't there a voice that can rise above it all? <clears throat> well, I believe the angel when he says that he has good news, news that is from above, news that sheds light on everything else that matters. And yes, this takes a huge amount of faith. I get that. But everything takes a huge amount of faith. It takes a huge amount of faith to believe that you can figure out life and the afterlife on your own. It takes a huge amount of faith to believe that the sources you're citing are, are absolutely true. It all takes faith. And I'm putting my faith in the good news of Jesus Christ. This good news is that we have a Savior, a promised one, who comes at just the right time with just the right stuff to meet our deepest needs. A Savior who is approachable, accessible, nearby. A Savior who is for us, who came to us. A Savior who outlines the way to live, teaches God's words, who models the truest way to be. A Savior who gave himself for our sins, that we might be forgiven, set free, and might receive eternal life. A Savior that makes sense out of our confusion, who guides us in the dark fog, and who walks with us in our questioning. This is good news indeed. It's news that brings joy. And the shepherds had reasons to be dejected. They needed joy. I mean, they were never going to be hugely successful. They were some of the lowest on the pecking order. They, they had to uh, live with a low-grade poverty. Um, and on top of all that, they carried their own insecurities, fears, and weaknesses. Life is hard for everyone, including those shepherds. But the result of the news that the angels brought was joy. It was joy because it meant that this life is not all there is. There's an eternal kingdom that Jesus came to establish. This life is only a short stopover on the journey to eternity. This good news brought joy because it meant that they were never to be alone again. Jesus came to us. He promised he would never leave us and never forsake us. And the good news brought joy because it meant that God would come through on his promises. He will always come through on his promises. We can trust him. We can rely on him. How is your joy quotient these days? You know, Christmas time, we sing songs like Joy to the World. But are you experiencing joy? Really? Is your heart lit up? Are your days filled with the gladness that Jesus came to bring? Or do you feel like you have like a heavy, wet blanket just weighing you down? It's one thing to know in your head the joy that Christ uh, came to bring, to believe that. But it's another thing to experience that in your heart, in your, in your life. Again, it must be received by faith. But Christ came to bring joy. This is what he said. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them beauty instead of ashes the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Notice how many times he references bringing joy. Now build up the brokenhearted, comfort those who mourn, provide for those who grieve, an oil of joy for those who are mourning, the garment of praise for those who are in despair. He wants you to experience joy, peace and joy through his good news. The good news that his, of his coming, his presence, his sacrifice, and his offer of eternal life. That is the only true source of our peace and joy. Now I want to um, invite Katie Beagle to join me here. Uh, she's got some things to share with you as well. Uh, we were talking about this uh, the peace and joy that Christ brings. And she has a story, a uh, personal story, of how that resonated with her. So uh, let's go to Katie now. Thank you so much for inviting me to um, share this story with you. I, I love any opportunity that I can have to talk about what God's done in my life and his goodness to me. And so um, for this story to kind of have impact, I want to give you a little bit of a background about my life. And um, I actually started experiencing anxiety from a very young age. When I look back, I had this 
fear always um, about not being able to breathe. Even from the age I remember, the age of like four or five, this was an anxiety that was there. But of course, I didn't know what that meant or we didn't know how to talk about it. So it was just this fear um, that would consume me as a young child. And then as I grew into adolescence and hit high school, I actually started having panic attacks. And it was always based on this feeling that I couldn't breathe for some reason. And that would, as I would get anxious, it would settle in. And then I'd be in a full-blown panic attack that would debilitate me for hours. And thankfully, with the help of my doctor, and um, I was able to get it controlled. But I never quite healed. I was never healed from it. And then I realized as we moved into the stage of having babies and having little kids, I just kind of transferred that anxiety to them. So when my girls would get sick and it would become this, you know, really bad cold or croup or bronchitis, all the things that that you experience as a as a young parent, I would just be wrecked. And I remember times where they would be sick and I would lay awake in their room the whole night on the floor, listening to them breathing and feeling like somehow my worrying was going to fix the situation. I don't know. Um, but then four and a half years ago, we found out that we were having our third child and we were so excited and we went for an ultrasound halfway through the pregnancy and there were actually some markers on his on his ultrasound that uh, could show that he actually would have down syndrome and so my doctor asked if we wanted to do like a follow-up exam to see if you know just to kind of look into it further and so we agreed and we waited for the the phone call to come to book that appointment and it never came and so Steve and I both felt like that in that waiting that God was just saying just trust me that doesn't matter you you could know everything and it doesn't change your reality just trust me with this and so our second half of our my pregnancy with with Lyle we just prayed and prayed we prayed for his health we prayed for his well-being we were just very intentional about um submitting him to God that no matter what was to be that his life was a gift and a blessing and we just had this incredible peace as we as his um as his due date drew near and we were we were so excited no matter what and then uh actually four years ago today November 28th I was due to have him and he didn't come and he didn't come the next day or the next day <laughs> and uh so he ended up being quite overdue and so we went into the hospital finally when he decided to enter this world and with being an overdue baby there are some complications and uh, he actually had um, meconium which is when they have a bowel movement in utero and it it can be very dangerous for for babies and so um, they were on alert and when he was born he his first breath he breathed this um this dirty water deeply into his lungs and it was um within just an instant everything changed the the energy in the room changed and the the NICU team went into to high gear and uh, he was taken away um within a couple minutes of being born and so Steve went with him and they were taken across the hall and I just remember I was left there and I couldn't do anything I couldn't chase after him I couldn't I couldn't um a fret or worry or get in there and manipulate anything I just had to be and I remember out loud as the doctors are still there working on me just saying God please be with him please help him and the peace that just fell on me and filled the room was unlike anything I've ever experienced it was it was remarkable just thinking about all the things that I've struggled with the anxieties that I've had specifically related to this kind of scenario and God just filled that room and um and so I, yeah it's unlike anything I can't even I can't describe it and that that piece carried us through the next season of our life we ended up being in there for 17 days and as you can imagine it's December and you've got two little kids at home still and um our preparations for Christmas that year were incredibly simple. We were just getting through day by day. And yet I look back and I have such fondness for that season. And um, yeah, God just carried us through. And I, I rem remember sitting in the NICU with him and just having time to listen to worship music and pray over him and pray over his life. And it was good. And um, 
yeah, I'm thankful for that memory that I have. And I just, I can't help but praise God. He is such a good father to us. And he he loves to give, give us good gifts as his children. And the grace in that moment of his peace was one of the best gifts I've ever experienced. You know, we may never get to have our dark nights pierced with the glorious light of one of God's angels. But we've got something even better. We have God's word. We have God's Holy Spirit. And we have God's Son, Jesus, who will never leave us, who will always be with us. And we can go back again and again to the Bible and, and rehearse and remember what Jesus has done. The Holy Spirit will ignite our hearts, will, will inspire us and bring us insight into the, into the Word as well as the living Word. You do not have to live in worry or anxiety. You do not have to be afraid. The one who formed the world, who holds it all together, who ascended higher than the heavens so that he fills the whole universe, is the one who loves you and cares for you and watches over you. There is no danger that he cannot overcome. There is no sorrow that he cannot comfort. There is no worry that he cannot ease with peace. And when that peace comes, supported by the truth uh, in the person of Jesus Christ, and you are filled with joy, be like those shepherds and go and tell everyone else. Spread the word of the Christ child that was born so that many others who have never known this incredible peace and joy can experience it just like Jesus wants them to. We're going to close our time today in uh, listening prayer. And uh, just as Christ came uh, and was close to, close to uh, his people, was close to Mary and Joseph in that little stable, and close to the shepherds when they came, Jesus was close to them. They could touch him. They could, he could, they was right there. Jesus is close to us right now as well. He's close to you right now, wherever you are. Uh, you think, oh, my home is kind of humble. It's not, uh, not the place for a glorious king. Well, he wants to come there. He's used to humble homes. And he wants to be with you. So he's there right now. And so let's listen. Let's listen to see what Jesus might want to say to us today. Oh, Lord, thank you that we can come to you. And in Jesus' name, we claim these moments right now, wherever people are. We pray that no other voice would speak but the voice of your Holy Spirit. And you would listen, speak into these people's hearts, people who are hungry for you, people who uh, are tuning in because they want to, to connect with the living God. So, Lord, I pray that you would speak to us today. Maybe you are overwhelmed with fears today. What is Jesus saying to you about his peace? Maybe you're overwhelmed with sorrow today. Bring that sorrow to Jesus. Offer it up to him. Hold it in your hands kind of and lift it up to Jesus right now. What is he saying to you about your sorrow? What is he saying to you about the joy that he wants to bring you? Jesus was accessible to the shepherds and he's accessible to you. Are you approaching him these days? Are you reaching out to him? Lord, I thank you for who you are. Thank you that you are real, you are alive, that you are approachable. We can approach God's throne of grace with confidence, with freedom, because of you, Jesus, because of what you did. <clears throat> and so I pray that you'd help us to take advantage of that, 
uh, today, throughout this Advent season, throughout our whole lives. So we would constantly be reaching out to you and approaching you. I know, Lord, that those who are watching here today are watching because this is what they want. They're curious. They're hungry for you. They don't want to go through life just, um, you know, with you at a distance. They want you close. They want to hear your voice in their hearts. They want to sense your presence all around them. And Jesus, this is what you came to do. You are called yourself, you were called Emmanuel, which means God with us. And so as you are with us, Lord, may we experience the peace that you bring, supernatural peace. May we hold strongly to the truth of who you are. And may we be filled with joy because of all that you do for us. And we love you so very much. And we need you so very much. So thank you that you are here with us. We commit this Advent season to you, these next four weeks as we prepare for Christmas. Uh, visit our hearts as you visited uh, the shepherds all those years ago and the wise men and Mary and Joseph and Zacharias. And Lord, that you would meet with us as well. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it's so great to be with you guys today. And uh, I pray for God's peace on your life. Uh, I think of what it says in John 16, verse 33. I've told you these things so that you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Those are Jesus' promises to you. You will have trouble. Life is hard. I know that. I get that. I experience that as well. But we can take heart because Jesus has overcome the world. and He's with us. Uh, God bless you guys. I hope you have a fantastic week and I look forward to being with you next week.